It is March. It's the end of March specifically, but it's still technically March. Somehow, some way, we are still here. I thought Animal Crossing would hurry the days along, but I fear they have prolonged them. Um, March was a hellscape of a month. It was confusing and troubling. The beginning of the month, most of us maybe felt like things were gonna be okay-ish and now they're not. We're all, for the most part, if we were able, or quarantined, or self-isolating, or social distancing at home. Um, I have felt as though I am living in one giant medical commercial where it's only the list of side effects, and those side effects go on and on and on. Side effects include anger, fear, all the inside-out emotions, desire to both throttle and aggressively hug the people you're quarantined with, overwhelming sense of losing the concept of time, guilt, snack stomach, insomnia, persistent thoughts of maybe I should have gone off the grid when I joked about it in 2015, self-loathing. Ask your doctor if it's right for you, but honestly you don't have a choice. Stay at home. That's the point of this video. I'm going to talk about the books I read this month. I read Jane, which is uh, written by Elaine Brosh McKenna, and I'm assuming illustrated by Ramon, Ramon K. Perez. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre. I briefly talked about it in my book, book haul. It's a lovely sort of 1960s Batman style illustration, heavy lines, nice colors. It smells like a Scholastic Book Fair, although the contents are not of something that should be at a Scholastic Book Fair. What I liked about it, it's pretty. I'll keep it. What I didn't like about it was that it took something as simple as Jane Eyre, Jane Eyre's struggle to find her confidence, you know, meeting Mr. Rochester, having a job, having a crappy income, but some sort of income, and uh, then realizing that she did not need Mr. Rochester's help in order to be happy and free, but desired it when the power balance was equal by the end of the book. And it took all those ideas and smashed it. We don't know Jane Eyre's age. We don't know if the relationship she develops with the CEO, Mr. Rochester, is sort of like, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey, Mr. Grey kind of character is appropriate or, you know, not creepy. But you see Jane Eyre, this beautiful supermodel woman and her beautiful supermodel, Mr. Rochester, even though both of them are supposed to be plain looking, which point of contention there, and you find them in this really silly power dynamic that does not work and does not work in the context of the original novel. I think you can do something like Jane Eyre, update it, and um, still keep those core values. This book did not do that. Plus the way they handled Bertha was upsetting and weird. Moving on, I listened to A Question of Holmes by Brittany Cavallero, the final book in Charlotte Holmes' Quartet. Um, I'm a huge fan of this series. It kind of holds a special place in my heart. Um, I like these characters. I like their journey. I like the audiobooks. The narrators are like masterful in their ability to tell the story. I feel the chemistry and the romance. I feel this sort of teenage need to like have control in a world that is in their case, incredibly not in control, and I like their motivations. I think the series is really good. All the books I liked for different reasons. This book, due to circumstances out of my control, basically the world and the news, um, sort of got away from me. So how I feel about it isn't as strong as the other books. I think that really comes from the fact I wasn't paying great attention. Next, I reread The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. At this point um, in March, I wanted some sort of stasis. I wanted something to make me feel normal. And The Hating Game is a book I really love, so I decided to reread it. It's a great book, and I'm excited about the movie. Although, am I a fan of Lucy Hale? I've never liked her anything, but could I be? I'm not really sure. Next, I did a buddy read with Madeline. She's one of my favorite people on BookTube and one of my uh, just like top, top, Five friends on MySpace, if you will. Um, we read Something to Talk About, an arc of Something to Talk About by Meryl Wil Wilsner. Um, this is a female-female romance um, about 
Hollywood about a sort of a Shonda Rhimes-esque producer, powerhouse producer, and her assistant. They're put on, put into like an uncomfortable PR position and uh, end up, you know, have a little crush, falling in love. Um, I like this. This was very fast paced. It moves very quickly. It's com compulsively readable. Um, what I didn't like about it, which is something Madeline mentioned in her video and I have to agree with, is that it takes them a very long time to get together and on that journey there's a whole lot of miscommunication so if you're someone who really is bothered by miscommunication especially in romance this is probably not for you because a lot of it is miscommunication but it's very sweet it's very um gentle the way that the romance is handled the way that the power dynamic is handled there's an element to this book that could have been very crass that's handled really beautifully I really enjoyed it. It was very sweet. I'm excited to see more sapphic romances from traditional publishers like Berkeley. Um, it's exciting. Next, I read The Adventure Zone Murder on, on the Rockport Limited by the McElroys. Uh, the Adventure Zone uh, is a podcast. Um, most podcasts are bad, I fundamentally believe, but I do love almost everything the McElroy brothers make um and if you want to listen to something that is a punch a punch up or punch laterally kind of vibe in these dark times that'll make you laugh and forget about stuff that's a great podcast to listen to my brother my brother and me and the adventure zone and their various offshoots um this is a sequel to their first uh novelization of their D, &D podcast and i really loved it it's just a lot of fun, and it was like a moment of joy for a couple hours. It wasn't, it brought, did it take me two hours to read this? Probably. I like to look at pictures really hard. Um, I really loved it. It was great. <laughs> I'm excited about the third book. Next, um, I did a wee little, uh, buddy read. It was supposed to be like lots of people doing it, and, um, only person that really participated <laughs> was Emma from Drinking by My Shell. God bless her. Um, but we read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I did a Twitter poll, asked people what we should read, what genre, people pick thriller, which was not my choice, and then um, people chose The Turn of the Key. This is a mystery thriller about a young woman who becomes a nanny in some rich people's house and a nanny to their four children, four daughters. Um, the parents are really like, they're always gone and basically something weird happens something bad happens and there's a murder um a death actually murder maybe who knows this is uh it was fine i don't know like i listened to an audio it was a great audio book um i would recommend the audio but thrillers they have to be really really good for me to like them and this was like fine so I gave it three stars. It wasn't egregiously terrible, but I also didn't really love it. Um, the mystery element is kind of boring, but it is creepy and spooky, which is fun. And it did infuriate me and I hated every character, which if a novel can do that successfully, make me mistrust or hate every character, I think that's a prize in itself. Moving on. A book that could have been like that is The Jet Setters by Amanda Eyre Ward. This is Reese Witherspoon's book club pick for March, and I love Reese Witherspoon, so I had to pick it up. This is a very targety book, and what I mean by that, it's a book you see at Target and you go, well, maybe, and you probably won't pick it up. But if you're desperate at the beach with your parents or family, you may pick it up. Does that make sense? Um, I'm a huge fan of a Target book. Specifically, one of my favorite writers is Emma Straub. She writes these like family dramas um, that are very readable, uh, contemporary, literary fiction adjacent books. And they're very good. And she has a new book coming out called All Adults Here that I'm very excited about. So I was expecting it to be like Emma Straub and it was like Emma Straub, but not as good. And I'll get to why. This is about um, a screwed up family who uh, goes on a cruise. So what could go wrong? They go on a European cruise through the Mediterranean 
and it's um, a widower, the mom, and her three adult children who all have their own problems. Um, this book is heavy. It deals with um, some heavy topics and I'll give you some like trigger warnings. It deals with depression, suicide, alcoholism, um, infidelity. It gets into some serious stuff, but it never feels serious. Does that make sense? Um, like the tone of the book is sort of weird. It's a little, it's like lighthearted, but also very serious. Um, it's moving from all the perspectives of the main characters, all the people in the family. And I genuinely like felt empathy for all the characters. I think that that's something that's, like I said, very, also very difficult to do because this book could also have been a flat. I hate all of them, but there is a, like a gentleness there that I think is really well done. The thing that I found really disappointing about this book, besides the fact that I couldn't really figure out the tone even in the very serious moments because it felt like they were very quick, you didn't really get dived into very deeply, um, was the ending was incredibly lackluster. Um, and then a lot of stuff was unresolved and I was like, you could have, this is a beach read. You could have resolved this for my beach going in my own house during stay at home quarantine could have done for me personally. The other thing about it is you're traveling through these Mediterranean countries, but there's not, they don't, it's not a travel book and I like travel books and it didn't give me that and I wanted it, especially now. So and the last book I read this month is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This won the Prince Award and by God it deserved it. I think people know what this is about. This is a book about um, a teenage girl who is a lesbian who has a messy relationship with her girlfriend and her girlfriend's kind of a, a butthead and her girlfriend is really dismissive of uh, the main character's feelings and is kind of like screws around and like not great and it's a book about heartbreak and and friendship and, and the i mean the illustrations are absolutely stunning they're gorgeous the palette here is like so nice it's a queer romance um not about coming out not about um sort of the trials and tribulations of something like that um but it's a book about heartbreak which is like universal no matter your gender and no matter the gender of the person you're dating and I really appreciated this it was so good it was so smart and sad and you felt for the characters and you felt like the main character was equally um you felt equally bad for the main character and also like kind of annoyed with her and I think that's a difficult thing to do and it was so good and if you haven't picked this up um, I would definitely do it. It took me a while to pick it up because I just kept forgetting to pick it up and I'm glad I did because it was awesome. So those are the books that I read, flip my brain, that I read in March. Um, I'm really not sure what I'm going to read next. I am working on a video with, um, someone. <laughs> Secret. I'm not important enough to say something like that, but I'm going to keep the mystery alive. And I'm just, you know, I'm having a time. I hope you guys are well. Um, let me know if you have any opinions about the books that I read. I would love to know them. And uh, stay safe, everyone.